morning, everyone. It is Monday. Sometimes they say Monday fun day. Hopefully that's today. Um, you're on the lifeboat. Let's do a little roll call. How's everyone doing? I hope uh, I hope your week is fantastic. We're going to make a strong start. Good week. Start with butt kicking Mondays. Good weeks start with solid Mondays, you know? Jamie Smith, Rexkin Messler, Resonate, Scooby Lee, Plant Freak, Teresa, good to see y'all. Brianna Miller, Lumen, Sandy Wandy, Nicole Jonker, Charlie Mullins, Mara, West Coast Fancy Nancy, Plant Freak, Jason P. I saw Jason P. I made I had made a different um, video idea this morning, and Jason P was the first in the chat, and then I deleted that and changed my mind about what we were going to do this morning. So shout out to Jason P for being ready for whatever. I appreciate you, brother. Shannon Smith. Thanks for coming out. Krista Melinda, the seventh son, crazy girl, mischief managed, Jill Anderson, Sierra. Good to see everybody here this morning. Rogue Hedgy. Heck yeah. Hope everyone's having a good morning. Deeming. Russ. I see you, bud. Heck yeah. Miss Sunrise Dawn. Thanks everybody for your patience in this transition. And uh, thanks for strapping in for it. Seems to be going all right. Now uh, this morning, I think uh, we're gonna bring the Admiral on. We're gonna pull his leg a little bit, we're gonna fart around. Um, it should be a good time. Um, I'm gonna bring him on right now. And then I'm gonna put my orange juice back in the fridge while you guys chat for a second. Nic Nicola is on an incredibly loud, doddery old bus. Hey, is that a uh, reference to um, my brother's channel? <laughs> I'm sorry. That was, that was low-hanging fruit, but he said the bus. Hey, there's the host. For a second there, I thought you left me, man. Charlie Murphy, good to see you. What's happening, Spanky? What's going on, Dad? Not too much. How are you? Yeah. I'm doing well. Getting a little bit of a late start, but you know that's what we got. Good old brown stuff for Monday mornings. Um, are Monday mornings. Johnny Scoville, have you ever met a Monday you liked? Not yet. And I'll be honest, with you, I'm not holding out much hope. Um, you I live for now. Has something for you? Okay. What does it say? says, Tommy, I heard you mention Kratom yesterday, and I've been using it to get off pain meds for migraines. What do you think about using Kratom to help with my dependency on pain meds? Kratom. Um, I would never judge how anybody gets off of, a, uh, of an opiate, right? If that works for you, fantastic. My um, opinion on Kratom is that uh, it does uh, work on the end receptor which is the same receptor in the body that heroin or any other morphine molecule is going to work on. If you're going to go that route, I would recommend that you go with Suboxone, right? Because it's made in the lab by a bunch of people that have actually figured out what the dosage is so that you can wean off without, you know, too much of a, um, of anxiety that you get from uh, trying to wean off other things. My fear with Kratom is that there is zero regulation on that. The Food and Drug Administration doesn't acknowledge that it exists. It is sold as a supplement or as a whatever, and they can uh, put in it just about anything they want because there's no, there's no, um, you know, the FDA, whether you, whether you like Big Pharma or not, every strip of Suboxone is the same as the previous strip of Suboxone and you know what you're getting. And it's been very, very effective. And it's, it's actually going to block the receptor. What Kratom does is get the receptor high, right? It's a, it is an agonist. It's not, you know, a uh, it is going in there and turning the receptor on and actually, uh, you know, doing the same thing heroin does, same thing pain meds do, uh, do, whereas Suboxone would be an agonist antagonist, right? By blocking it and making you think that you've done the drug, but you're not going to feel any kind of a buzz. I think that's my personal opinion. But if it's working, man, then keep swinging for the fences because. Heck Anything yeah. that gets you off the crap that's on the street right now. Don't you agree? I mean, this stuff's poison. That's a big deal. And you know, yeah, getting off, it's a big deal. And it, you're, whatever you, you're doing, 
being the same consistent every time, knowing that it's going to be the same every time, money can't buy that kind of security. That's pretty cool. And the coolest thing about it, whether it's sublocate, which I think may be the better bet, I just have not done it, right? I, I've never done the injection, so I can't speak to it yet, although that's my next step. Uh, what makes Suboxone so cool, Calhoun, is that um, you, fortunately, you probably don't remember a lot of this from youth, but you live, right, running to a parking lot to get dope and then running back to whatever you steal. You, your, your day is once you take all that off the table, which is what Suboxone does. More than anything else, what Suboxone does is eliminates the drug dealer, eliminates the need to come up with all of that cash. And all of a sudden you go, holy hell, I got a lot of time on my hands. You know what I mean? Like I could probably get a job. I could probably raise a family. I could probably, you know, do things that normal people do. Jensaw Hater has an interesting take. I got more of a buzz from subs than Kratom, but that's just me. You know, I've um, noticed no, that's, that's not in necessarily- many cases- yeah, that, that's not necessarily a, um, a, a bad or a wrong take. Suboxone is one of the strongest op- opiates feeling wise that you are ever going to feel if you've never done drugs. If you've not done opiates of any kind, one strip of Suboxone will be so strong it's going to make you viciously ill, right? The average person could not take eight milligrams of Suboxone, which is what comes in a film. You would get violently ill. In prison, they'll take one of those strips and they will cut it into 32 or 64 pieces. And a 16th of one of those strips will take somebody who has never uh, had an opioid addiction and get them high. And I mean high, like you'll see them in the the day room nodding out looking like, but we're talking about this used to treat opiate use disorder, which would be like uh, somebody who has um, ADHD taking Ritalin, right? If I take Ritalin, I'm going to bounce off the wall like a ping pong ball. But if somebody with ADHD takes Ritalin, that's not going to happen, right? They're going to calm down because they have a, a chemical imbalance in the brain that this levels out. Suboxone does something different to people with opiate uh, abuse disorder. I've never felt anything off of a Suboxone uh, of any kind, but I know what it would do to Anybody that has not been on opiates, that's why it is the number one abused drug inside of jails and prisons, because it's very easy to smuggle and people that have never done that drug will get really, really high on it. That is very interesting. Happy birthday. Happy you birthday. That, Calhoun? Cause I, my... um, she wants us to sing happy birthday. Mischief Manage says, thank you very uh... much, Mischief. It's my birthday. So here's a gift for you. Would the three Scovilles be able to say happy birthday? I want happy, to show my kid. Happy birthday. Uh, Johnny Scoville, can you sh- sh- uh, throw Mischief Managed a uh, happy birthday? She's showing off for her uh, kid. It is a birthday today. Happy you birthday. You hear that? Get, to get yourself over to Chase the Heat today because you are going to get an official shout out on Chase the Heat. Ah! And uh, it is Mischief Managed's birthday, but she's showing off for her daughter. See so that you got you got Johnny Scoville on the mission. There you go on deck. Oh, swinging fences! Happy birthday! Fantastic! Thank you Happy for birthday. that detailed answer, pops. You're always much better with opia stuff than I am, just because of your experience. You know what? Just just the uh, here's the deal. I've caught so much crap over the course of uh, of the time that I've been uh, in the rehabilitation uh, game because of Suboxone. It's the, it is the most debated subject on earth. And you know what? It used to get my goat. You have no idea. Um, But what I've come to realize is that the, that people that uh, really struggle with the fact that people do opiates are really outside their lane in the, in the time I've been doing this, right? 20,000, I don't know how many uh, subscribers, right? I've never said you're right. Addicted. You're sober. You're not sober. And boy, I hope you never do either. Right? Oh, no. We're, we've got the, the one rule on the boat is everybody love everybody. Um, yeah. And, and you know, the only person who can tell you you've got a drug problem or you don't have a drug problem, I assure you, is you. Right? And that's, that's what you're talking about is called taking someone's inventory. Um, and the only that. person that can take your inventory is you. You know what I mean? It's, it's all really subjective. And it has that. to be. If it, I mean, if you start taking other people's inventory and letting other people take your inventory, um, 
lots of undesirable things are going to happen in your recovery. So, you know, it's own it. It's yours. It's your recovery. It's your program. You don't have to do it how anyone else says, but we are trying to come together and put our heads together here to figure out, you know, better ways to live, yeah. better ways to do it. Well, peer support works, right? I mean, that's the, the one thing that there are people that love to debate um, if 12 step programs are great or if, uh, you know, hypoism, there's about like nine different uh, ways that people approach the modalities of, uh, of sobriety. And guess what? All of them have a 10% success rate. The uh, across the board, whether you're inpatient, outpatient, whatever you do, they all have a 10% success rate. This format that you're doing has a much higher chance of success because the 150 people or whatever who are here are here because they want to be here, right? No one's being forced to be here. No one is getting, um, you know, uh, they're not doing this against their will, which is unfortunately what happens to a lot of 12-step programs because of the court systems. When you got in trouble, Calhoun, did they order you into 12-step uh, programs? Hmm. I don't think so. No? Maybe. <laughs> they did me. Every I feel like I was time never I that ever. guy, luckily. <laughs> yeah. Every time I got in trouble, the, the uh, first thing they do. And, and you know, the, and what was funny is I never, I wasn't in trouble for drugs. Well, right? see, I wasn't even in trouble for drugs. I would get in trouble with my mom and she would take me to meetings that she was going to because she mm-hmm. wouldn't trust me to be at home alone. Yeah. So I did end up going to a lot of meetings against my will, but it's not like I was forced to participate. I could run around the church or do whatever. Right. Um, no, what I, I had to do was I would have to show up in, uh, with a piece of paper for my uh, probation officer. Have to get assigned. Right. Or court services. This is another one that's very popular is that if you are on um, bail, like if you bail yourself out before you go to jail, anyone who is on in the state of Nevada, anyone that was on bail had to go, you know, you were already having to go to these programs and, you know, which doesn't, I don't know, it doesn't make a lot of sense. It really doesn't. Metric Consul is asking about um, Suboxone and chronic pain. I'm trying to it's, read it. Can you read that to me? Tommy, I don't understand then. If you don't feel anything on Suboxone, then why do doctors lie and tell chronic pain patients when who do not have OUD, don't know what that is, that Suboxone will help their chronic pain? Opiate use disorder. If the patients do not have opiate use disorder, then they're going to feel Suboxone. Right? That, so so, so that a doctor, sense. a doctor can, but they usually will not use um, Suboxone and, and it, what they'll use is Subutex, which is the same drug. It's buprenorphine. The guy that invented this stuff's name was John Lewis. And he was, the, the goal of this uh, drug was not to create something to get you off of other drugs. He was trying to create a painkiller, right? Um, it was an attempt at making a, um, um, a safer, uh, kind of a pain medication. Now, it kind of missed the mark. It's not the greatest pain medication on planet Earth. Now, do doctors take all of this stuff? They don't. They read a lot of reports on it, but the vast majority of these people don't have any idea what it feels like to treat pain because the vast majority of them have not been in the kind of pain that you are in. And I've been there. I've sat in doctor's offices. And you know what? It's almost worse when you get the doctor that you know, I, I, I talked about the doctor that was, uh, you know, my pain uh, management doctor when I lived in, in Utah, but uh, it was, what do you want? 12 Oxycontin, uh, 80s a day, and here's some injections for breakout pain, and here's some this, and here's some that. Um, it's sad. It's a, it's a horrible medicine, uh, medical field to go into because you can't do anything right. You know what I mean? Lisa Trimble, it's good to see you. You know what? Calhoun, I don't know how well you've gotten to know Lisa. Lisa's one of my favorite people. Not very well. She has been present for, I think, all of my videos, um, but um, she'll say hello and then get Lisa to lurking, sure. which is totally fine. That's, um, you know, I always I, say hello when I see her. Dirty mouse. Scared to death. Keep going. Take my low dose Xanax for anxiety, depression. But I have to go some. I have to go places sometimes, so I have to take it. Psych appointment this week. Hopefully, she'll give me something better. You know, this is a this is such a hard thing, right? This is such a hard thing because once again, this is a this is a discussion, and this is a channel where there are a lot of people who abuse Xanax, 
right? So for that reason, if we talk about Xanax on this on this channel, we're probably not saying a lot of good stuff about it, right? There are a lot of people on planet Earth that Xanax is a miracle for, right? There are a lot of people on planet Earth that Oxycontin is a miracle for, just not anybody here. Um, but Dirty Mouse, if you're not, I don't think you need to feel guilty for taking something you're prescribed if you're taking it the way it's prescribed. Have really open discussion and dialogue with your, with your doctor. But if you're doing things the way that your doctor has prescribed it and it is doing what it is supposed to do, I don't know that you should be beating yourself up. Um, Ativan and Xanax are two different kinds of drugs. Well, you know what? They're both, they're both benzos, but one has a very different, they are very different drugs. One has a, a component in it that is supposed to kind of make you feel sort of happier. Yeah. Ativan doesn't operate like, um, Xanax. It's a different drug. Yeah. One, lorazepam, right. Which is, uh, uh, Ativan versus, uh, Alprozolam. I abused the crap out of Ativan and I did it because of the difference between it and, uh, and Xanax. I'm not a huge Xanax fan. I, I, I even was yeah. never into the benzos. They used to just make me really mad. And, uh, I was prescribed Ativan for a while. I could have predicted, with no disrespect, but I could have predicted with your personality that Xanax would have been a, a bad call. Same with me. Same and with not me. only is it a bad call, it's a very bad call. This is for a lot it's of a people. Mistake. The, you know what it is? Is that if if uh, drugs like benzos or before benzos um, barbiturates, the first thing, alcohol too, the first thing that it's going to do is it's going to uh, change your inhibitions and how things, um, how thing, how you process, right? That's frightening is that the first thing that goes is your ability to process things. So all the decisions you make on the rest of the night aren't worth a fart. And, you know, yeah, that, I'm not a benzo guy. Never have been. Uh, Danielle McCoy says, thank you for the love yesterday about my dead spots, my hippocampus encephalitis survivor, but it has caused a lot of permanent brain issues. Sending love to you all. Love right back to you, Danielle. I brought that up because I'm sure my dad can relate and uh, I'm sure he's got some love and support for you as well. Absolutely. You know what? The uh, dialectic behavioral training, I think, is the uh, the best thing that um, we have this and we're going to get up and have some coffee and hang out on a lifeboat. Right. Every uh, Morris says my mom was a zombie on Xanax, but functional on Audubon. You know, I, I'm not surprised by that. Um, you know, I'm also. Not, it's, it, Good. I was going to say shout out to Aria. He's uh, got his seven year old around. He won't be um, spending too much time in the chat this morning, but I just wanted to make sure I gave him a shout out. Stay safe, my brother. Tommy Bird was addicted to Xanax. It's a vicious uh, addiction, from what I understand. I never could consume enough of them conti like, like consistently. Um, to develop an issue because it was always just an issue when I had one or two. I'm blown away that he weaned off of, uh, of um, a Benzo successfully. Right. And doing that alone is a hard thing to do. It's a vicious but drug. It's a vicious drug. And people don't understand just how uh, seriously dangerous it is. Uh, Mark wages tells the story of watching somebody pass away in a day room where he was in. Um, you know, from acute benzo withdrawal. I've watched people um, pass, but uh, when, I mean, I've seen seen it happen. I've never seen it live. When you have seizures in withdrawal, is that an opiate thing or is that a benzo thing? You with 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 uh, opiates, you're not going to seize in withdrawal. You're not. I mean, That's unless you thought. have a medical condition, right? But if Which if you're a normal mom person, does not have that. Right. You're, if if you're just a normal person, then it is a non-issue. Benzos or alcohol. Right. If you quit cold turkey, your body will go into uh, into seizures and it, it absolutely can kill you. Brandon Calloway, four weeks sober. Oh, good for you, brother. Good for him you. With a, I'm dropping a that off. for you, brother. Yeah, I will drop that off to you today, too. Tommy, are you telling me that Suboxone is going to treat my pain as well as oxycodone does? Absolutely not. When my doctor retires, I may be forced to take Suboxone because no one will continue prescribing opiates. No, Matt, I'm sorry. I'm not telling you that. I, I, I can't tell you that. It's not even going to be close. Um, out of curiosity, how much, uh, what, what are they giving you in terms of oxycodone? How much of it are you taking, if you don't mind, just because it's, 
It's kind of relevant. But no, one of those is a rip and painkiller. If they're going to take you off, and I'm not a doctor, right? But of the long-term stuff to treat pain, I would look at, um, if it were me, and that's, I had your uh, situation, I'd be looking at uh, methadone. And that may, I know people go, eh, but methadone is a fantastic painkiller. And if you live with long-term pain, well, then the side effects of every painkiller are something that you're going to have to deal with. That one is very, very inexpensive, right? So insurance companies don't usually freak out about it. And it has the longest half-life of any drug known to man, right? So when you put it into the body, it treats pain. You can really effectively treat pain with, um, with it. I know that no one likes to hear that because it's such an ugly word, but <laughs> yeah. But no, it's not going to treat it that well, Magic. I'm sorry. I wish that it would, but there's nothing that's going to treat it that well, sadly. Sorry for that sound. It needed to happen. That was a good one, Kel. It was really it sounded absurd. like two baseball bats hitting each other. Yeah, it might have been a mistake <laughs> in hindsight, whatever. No, so, you're um, right, though. Zelda Z has a question. On opioids for chronic pain for 30 years, off for six uh -huh. months, no energy and body wouldn't work. Tried a lot of other meds to no avail. Back on one and a half a day, working well. Thoughts? If it's working well, fantastic. Yeah, I agree. Um, if yeah, it's working, it's working, working well, fantastic, right? You're not, I don't think you're doing anything. 40 milligrams a day Met, metric. I'm going to get to you in, uh, back on that in one sec. But um, And I, I have your, uh, I got your question over to the side here, so I won't lose you. Thank you. Um, on opiates for chronic, yeah, 30, uh, the fact that you, uh, you were off for six months, had no energy and your body wouldn't work is not a shocker for a lot of reasons, right? I, I was on opiates for 30 years, right? I did that for three decades and uh, I, I came off of them and I was off of them for five years and was really struggling that entire time with the same kind of things you're describing. I was getting up and doing yoga. I was walking six or seven miles a day, but I did not like any of it. It was absolutely horrific, the entire process. And I met a doctor who, uh, who said, you really should try Suboxone, which is not how people get on Suboxone, right? Normally they get on it to get off of the drug that they're, and I was not on a drug, but it was absolutely a godsend, plain and simple. All right, we got Metro right here as well. Okay. Continuity. Mara, do you see this? Look at that. Oh, is this the lifeboat on that? Is that the coolest thing you've ever seen? Thank you, Mara. I, I, I thought it. you were wiping your nose with my hanky for a second. No, I yours is a no, fired no, up, no, 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 no. I'm, I'm, afra I'm afraid of you. Don't worry about it. You, you're younger than I am. I'm not going to do this. Uh, um, metric 40 says milligrams. 40 milligrams total. Okay, daily. 40 milligrams, uh, 40 milligrams um, a day total. The good news is this, that's not wildly high uh, dose. So yeah, you may news. actually get, you may actually get fairly close effective treatment with something like Subutex. I would not do Suboxone. I would do Subutex. And the reason for that is multi, uh, uh, this is weird, right? But Suboxone does actually block part of the drug that you're taking, right? The, the Narcan and Suboxone, cuts down on the bioavailability and it cuts down on your ability to do more of it. As you take more Suboxone, you're also taking more Narcan and you get to a point where the Narcan overweighs everything you just took. And basically it made it really difficult to abuse is what they did. They made it a very hard drug to abuse. So most people don't even bother to try. However, one person's abuse is another person's raising the level so that they can treat pain. Without the Narcan in it, if a doctor writes you a prescription for Subutex instead, you're going to start hearing about milligram amounts that are higher than you would normally hear in a office where they're trying to treat you for uh, for addiction, opiate use disorder, which is what those three initials stand for. Bill, the O U D, opiate use disorder. We don't I say felt silly after saying no, it out loud. I don't know what that means. Well, there's an as soon alcohol. As you said one, it, I was like, of course. If well, it had been an the alcohol, alcohol one, one now, I, I would have recognized it. Well, you know what I mean? They're doing it with everything. They're, these are the new euphemisms because, you know, back in the day we said junkie, but you can't say any of those things. I still say that. So. so do I. And I was a junkie, right? Yeah. Like it doesn't bother me, but there are people that really struggle with it. And I get it. Right? I it's get different it, when you lived a life. Exactly. And you it's know what? I wasn't, I, wasn't, uh, I wasn't an addict. I wasn't a functioning addict or whatever. I was a junkie. I was doing the things I was doing was just awful. Real quick. Real quick, we keep dancing around a, a subject I want to touch on briefly. 
Um, we're going to run into this forever because it's just integral to recovery, in my opinion. Um, this is a very, very subjective um, subject matter. When I say subjective, what works for me might not work for Metro Console. What works Absolutely. for Metro Console may kind of work for my dad, but you know, there's something better out there even than that. You know what I mean? So we are going to try to explore a myriad of options. We're going to try to be as thorough as possible. Um, but no just question. know, like if something ain't working, there's probably something better out there. There's probably a better route, a better path. Um, but it, you know, I just want to say that. No. And you know what? Uh, you nailed it. I think that that's the most important takeaway here. Uh, metric too, is that um, it sounds like you're going to lose a doctor that, um, uh, you've had for a while and that sucks when, when new doctors come in or whatever, it really is about sitting down and having really long discussions. And it's, sometimes it's hard. I was I, going through this yesterday, right? Obviously I told you guys what was going on with me and they screwed up and gave me a poison and they, and were mean as hell to me when I was asking questions, right? You know, afterwards, and I know I'm not the most patient person and I, but I honestly, because I got lectured by two people before I even went in, right? Don't go nuts. I honestly went in there and just tried to sit down and get centered. And, you know, the guy asked the question and I started to talk and he said, that's not the question I asked you, right? Just answer the question. And I went, uh, okay, <laughs> you know, all right. Sometimes it's very difficult dealing with medical professionals. It is. Some of them though are fantastic. Some of them are the best people you will ever want to meet, but you've got to suck. Some of them suck, right? Some of them suck. Um, hold on one second. Mika says, I do want to get back to, I do want to get back to the last one though, when, when this is over, cause I want to talk to Lisa Trimble. I didn't uh, answer that, but oh. Subutex back in the eighties, my city had the worst epidemics in Finland before it was classified as drugs. 30,000 inhabitants, and we had two Subutex abuse clinics later. My age group was devastated. I believe that. I believe that. That anything that you're going to put on the street and let people buy without prescription, right, this is what happens. This is a absolutely horrific thing. Or if you don't realize what it is, um, Subutex is absolutely a drug. It is a strong drug. Buprenorphine is no joke. Okay, what was it? Can we get to Lisa Trimbles or did we lose it? Oh, there it is. Well played, Calhoun. Um, let me get this bigger. Don't have any heart problems, but the cardiologist put me on a low dose of a beta blocker for anxiety instead of Audubon. It usually works pretty well. And Audubon is backed up. I think that's great. It sounds to me like your doctor is trying to come up with, uh, things that, you know, he's thinking outside the box or off label. I think that's great. You know, and if, it, and if you say it's working most of the time and having the, uh, the Audubon as a backup, doesn't that sound perfect to you? That sounds fantastic. Right, just in case. It's a backup. Right. Best it's case a scenario. Backup. The question is, how do you feel about it, Lisa Trimble? Yeah, no the question. The question is, how does it make you feel? You know what I mean? Is it working? Because that's really what matters. Yeah, and I think that the most important thing, truthfully, is I don't know too many people that I've met on my time on this planet. When people say you know, denial, you, the person's in denial. I don't believe denial is what other people think it is. Cause I just haven't met that many people that can look me in the eye and go, I don't have a problem where I know that they're not BSing me and themselves. <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't think that there are people out there that really don't know if they're taking the pills properly or not properly. And I don't mean Lisa, I mean, everybody, if you're taking the medication, the way the doctor has told you to take it, then I don't see it, that there's a problem. I don't. Right. I know I can't do that. I can speak to that. Right. You give me a pill bottle that says, you know, take one, three times a day. Oh, I, I assure you, it's not going to go down that way. It's just not. Lisa says Good. it works most of pretty well. That's what we yeah. want. That's that's great. We love that. And by the way, another big shout out to uh, to Brandon, because that we were we were mid sentence when that happened. But good for you, bro. Four weeks. <laughs> Right now, now we're getting into the, we don't have to count weeks anymore. Right. I'm going to start knocking these things out in months again. I love this. Heck I really yeah. do, man. Well played. Well played. 
Um, I'm going to take a brief intermission to say hit that like, subscribe, and bell for notifications. And if you don't want to get automatically unsubscribed for no reason at all, or other than YouTube having code errors, um, hit all under the bell for notifications. And allegedly, we are told that stops the unsubscriptions. I have heard that too. People, I'm not a doctor, right? Never played one on TV. But I was on pro, pro I cannot say that word, Calhoun, and I've never been able to. Thank you. And I used to, it, it became a joke with me and the doctor who wrote me the, the uh, prescription for it the first time. Some the doctor's name, too. And uh, his name was uh, Dr. Fernandez. He was, I will tell you his name because he shout was out to the, the doctor. The, a shout out to the doctor. This was the cat that I worked with in the BOP who. The only doctor that I came across that I truthfully believed was good at what he did, that was there because he wanted to be there. He said to me, I I never got in trouble. I said, what? He goes, well, most of the doctors in here got in trouble doing something and you know they can't really work. And he said, I retired. And this place just happened to be about six blocks from my house. He said, and I come in here. He was the coolest dude. I mean, he just was cool. But he put me on that and he said, I'm putting you on this for your heart. However, it's been known to chill some people out. You know, he said, and most people in here need to chill out. Right. Um, he also, uh, I mean, that guy knew I was an addict. I got, when I got injured, he said to me, um, I want to put you on something for pain. He's like, but you're going to abuse it. He's like, I know who you are. I'm looking at your file. <laughs> he said, you know, I mean, he was just very, very open. He's like, and I really don't care. He goes, I'm not going to give you, you enough of it to get yourself into deep trouble. He's like, but I'm telling you, if you get caught with this stuff in your cheek, you know, they're going to take you off this yard and I, I said, yeah, you know, you can keep it. At that point, I that was already about three months in, but huh. yeah, ha. Huh. But he was a, he was a, he was a good guy, and I can't say that word. But I was uh, on it for a very long period of time. And Doctor Fernandez said to me that in all of the time that he was working uh, as a, a cardiologist, which is what he did in the real world, he said that um, it was the most effective drug that he had ever used treating. Um, just, just for the heart, not for the other stuff. But he was a big, he was a, a big fan of it. Goosebump says, just got here mid conversation. I was put on propanolol, uh, propanolol for a few years. Kind of sounds like prevent migraines. What? It kind of sounds like a bong hit. He said it helped <laughs> for migraines. Goosebump says it helped for migraines. I'll be damned. See, that's another wildly off label. But these are, you know, these are people that that. You know, doctors somewhere along the way that either thought outside the box or while they were doing a, a you know, a, a test, people went, I don't know if it's doing much, but my, my migraine seemed to be going away. Right. I mean, this is proven. There's no, science behind not. this CBC. Yeah. No, that's, you're not going to get anybody here that ever argues anything that you just said. Yeah, just, just because, because you've, had, you've alcohol. had alcohol does not make you an alcoholic. Doesn't mean you'll be an alcoholic. Absolutely not. In fact, I'm of the firm belief, and science kind of backs this up that before you ever taste that, you're uh, you either have it or you don't. Right now, you you could take two people who could go out and do the same thing every day for five years. Right, one who has the predisposition for alcohol abuse disorder, and one who does not. Right. Happens all the time in college. Two guys get together. They're best friends. They go through the fraternity every day. They're doing the exact same thing. One guy goes this way. One guy goes that way. He says, ah, we got to quit. You know, it's time to become an adult. One can't. Right. No matter what they do. In fact, it hangs with them for the rest of the time they're on planet Earth. You know how many people I partied with freshman year in college who, have, who went on three years later to live normal lives and do whatever? And not me. Right. I couldn't put on the brakes to save myself until I was in my mid 40s. It is, well, uh, there is a thank God for component. that. Yeah, thank God for that is right. My but chapeau. You like the uh, lid? I like how the sides are attached to the top for no reason. Just <laughs> like a statement. I think that's the, oh, there's, they're even better. They're snap-ons. Yes. I love it. I, I can, actually go, uh, I can it. go one, I can go the other. Can... You should put one like down, like, a, like it's a folded ear on a dog, you know? Yes. Like one of them is kind of. A Kestrel, give them hell over at the uh, Daybell trial, would you please? Give them hell. Um, yeah, the, apparently, it's pretty popular. It's used for everything. Uh, you know what I mean? You got a sore throat? Blah, 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 blah. 
kind of makes you wonder what it actually does. It's an interesting question, isn't it? They it do is. look I'm a little like have kitty to do some ears. Research. They look like what? Kitty ears, like cat ears. Oh, your hat, yeah. Da, 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 da. Lumen says they knew of a pain management doctor that did Botox injections for migraine pain. Yes. Always wondered if it helped people. A lot of people are doing this. A lot of people are using uh, Botox for uh, migraines. It is now, it's now not even off label anymore, right? Now they have, now Botox is being used on label to treat migraines. I have never gone down that road. Um, you know why? Because I have way too much expression in my forehead. I look like Reese. You ever notice, like, you can scare the crap out of Reese and nothing ever happens to her. She does not have one wrinkle on her forehead. Like, she ever see her do her serial killer face? She goes, and nothing happens. Like, there's no, uh, I, I couldn't do that. Can you put up Layla's? Yeah, I'm uh, getting lost in the sauce here. Can you tell? <laughs> Layla Bradley, question. My fibromyalgia pain can be so bad, but all my doctor wants me to do is take an opioid. I have changed diet, exercise, etc., but I don't have quality of life without taking pills. What should I do? It sounds like quite the conundrum. It does sound like quite the conundrum. Now, um, I hope you've said this to your doctor, right? I hope that you've said to your doctor, "Hey, I don't, I don't want to take opiates, right? This is not something that I want to do." I know that there are other classes of drugs that treat nerve pain specifically, right? That they could give you that are not opiates. Now. They have side effects too, and they're probably giving them, uh, giving you them anyway, right? You're probably on Neurontin or um, like Gabapentin, right? Neurontin or uh, Pregabalin, what's that stuff called? Lyrica. They probably have you on one or the other of those. Yeah, that would be my guess is that they have you. And if they don't, but I would talk to my doctor and say, I want to try to treat this without opiates if I can. However, if the only thing working is an opiate and you're taking it the way that it is said to be taken on the bottle, I don't know that that's such a bad thing. But again, I, I've never been anti-drug. I'm not an anti-drug person. This isn't an anti-drug anti channel. Yeah. yeah, it's not an anti-drug channel. Um, I just, I don't think, uh, yeah. I'm not a big fan of, of when it gets a hold of you and destroys your life, right? But the uh, the vast majority of people, um, believe it or not, but the uh, the vast majority of people who use drugs don't have a problem with them. I know that that sounds crazy, but it's the truth. Hey, I'm all over that. I, I'm no fan of big pharma. Um, and while you're you know giving it to big pharma in particular, you can give it to the Sacklers. I've been getting, speaking of migraines, I've been feeling like pressure behind my temple and my eyes. Oh, that's Not like constant, coming. but like every now and again. I can't tell if it's related to being tired or not having enough water. But I have to also say, I feel like I cannot drink enough water in this state. I have to literally have a feed bag attached to me <laughs> um, in order to drink enough water. Um, I have water at my, at my left perpetually. And I, I just am still not getting enough. Um, there's that. Thank you. Thank you. That's good to know. Just for my information, Botox for migraines doesn't do what Botox does for wrinkles. It's done differently. Uh, her mom's had two uh, brain surgery and has Botox for migraines. Uh, she, uh, she can still move her face. Excellent. Good to know. Thank you. Because I don't want to look like Anna Nicole. But if... Uh, if it really helps uh, with the migraines thing, Calhoun, I think you should really get, um, I think you should really get one of those hoods when I start to hurt, but you can't drink enough water. You're right. You cannot drink enough water. I definitely need some electrolytes. My dad hijacked my box and I haven't gotten some more. See how I just threw oh. you under the bus there, dad. Yeah, I saw that. I saw that. It was pretty slick. Uh, CBC says, I can take the big O's, but not be sharp. Gotcha. Court reporting requires sharpness, fast processing. I can't imagine <laughs> a court reporter on the nod. <laughs> oh, man. I'm sorry, but it would be, it, it's a Saturday Night Live skit waiting to happen. Could you read that back to me? Huh? 
sorry. From the people that brought you the home stenographer, we bring you the travel stenographer. <laughs> Got a small the person in a backpack. Yeah, with the Ron Popeil's pocket stenographer. <clears throat> All right. In the early 80s in Miami, free basing. I, after four days awake, asked the others, don't you want to stop? They all said no, so I moved back to Boston. Saved my life. What happened to them? They're gone. I assure you. I assure you. <laughs> you know, it. Um, everybody I know is gone, right? It just happens, right? The people that can't get out. Uh, sadly, especially in, in, in today's... The drugs that are on the street today are poisoned, right? The the drug supply is poisoned. If you're going to, uh, if you're out there and you're doing this, uh, it's going to kill you. Yeah, you're not drinking tap H2O. No, it's a not. lot easier for us if you just repeat the question rather than say, Will you please answer my earlier question? Because when you say, will you answer my earlier question? What I do is then I disengage from the show and I go and look for your question. Because if, if I had seen it, I would have answered it. So now, WP, if you don't mind, would you just uh, re repeat your question so I'm not disengaging and double back? It? I'm sorry to hear that, Matrix Rabbit. But Matrix Rabbit said um, all of his friends are, in, are locked up as well. And I think that it's a cliche, right? But you hear it at 12 steps and you hear it everywhere else, right? Where does it lead you? Institutions, right? Um, I you, forget, you but up, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, you, you end up you end up locked up in debt. I mean, that's really what it comes down to, right? You're in prison, you're in a, you're in a rehab, you're buried. And that's, um, or you get sober, right? Or you become the miracle. You become that 10%. That, uh, and if it's the, uh, and again, those numbers, Man, that they shouldn't bum you out. They should. You should be able to say, uh, "Oh, it's it can be done, right? For real." That's all it had to take for me. I just I thought I was of a variety of addict that was not possible. When I saw someone who had had a bigger habit than me, who got sober, it was a lock. If that dude could do it, I could do it. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Someone up here was commenting on. Um, I may have allergies and honey from the town I live in may help. I totally intend to get some local wildflower honey. Look forward to that. Um, hopefully there's bees in Arizona. Oh, there are bees in Arizona. I, I feel like there's got to be. Otherwise, there wouldn't be flowers in Arizona, right? Yeah, we have Arizona honey. There's a... um, yeah. And then someone else said, it was Spike ZZZ. They have to drink a significant amount of salt every day. I feel like there's a bunch of salt in my diet, but um, it is worth paying attention to and, and seeing where I'm at with that because that will help me retain more water. I'm definitely not getting enough electrolytes. Someone else asked how often I'm peeing. I don't want to get into too much detail, but I'm quite frequently. So I could be more hydrated judging by some, you know, some signs. But uh, I think that it's a multifaceted issue for sure. I bet sure. you if I was hydrated, had electrolytes, and what was the other thing? Had enough salt in my system, I'd probably be fine. Odd. Any fun plans this week, Dad? Um, this is weird from Brianna. Uh, do I have any plans this week? I'm going to... Uh... I'm probably going to be um, farting around. I'm, I don't have anything major um, planned. I know I'm probably going to be, uh, uh, sorry, doing a little around the house. I'm probably going to be putting up a couple of more uh, squirrel videos. I'm having a lot of fun farting around and chasing squirrel with a camera. Yeah, can't I've been watching tell you how much, pretty cool. Can't tell you how much fun I'm having doing that. I mean, I, I mean, really am having a pretty good time. Also, she's having my, just as much fun, you can tell. Yeah, she's having a pretty good time. The uh, I also, um, you know, I remember the bike mm -hmm. uh, that, that we bought. Well, I've been in the process of restoring this bike. And uh, I cannot tell you how much fun it is, right? You know, I mean, I've restored a lot of watches and, and I've restored a lot of things. But a bike may seem small, but to a guy that works on watches, 
this is the largest thing in the entire world, right? It's like working on the Empire State Building. The gears on this thing are that big, right? It's it, it's so easy, uh, but it, it's been a lot of fun to uh, to get it restored. Now everything works right. I've been riding it around and feeling younger. It's fun. But having a pretty maybe, good time. Maybe I need to make like a reptile and wet my epidermis. There you go. We're uh, we're getting to that time of the year too. Yeah, I almost got in the pool the other day, but I didn't. This is interesting. I live here in Southern California desert. Right. Drink a lot of water, which will wash out electrolytes, so they need to be replaced. Yeah, no, yes. I uh, I believe the ratio is a three to one. Like if you had three glasses of water, one bottle of Gatorade kind of deal or electrolyte drank. Debbie P. Um, I, uh, I feel your pain, literally. Um, I know that, uh, yes, I do fix clocks along with watches. Um, they're, again, they're, they're just bigger watches. <laughs> they're easier to work on actually, but depending there are some lock, there are some clocks like, uh, JLC Atmos. I can't fix that. Um, de degenerative disc disease is horrific. Johnny Scoville, uh, everything that you're listing. Johnny has and has had surgeries on them. And uh, my back's not in great shape. Johnny's this is in awful shape. I've been uh, here, dad. Hold on. This is a three parter. Was on Fent patch for years, signed, controlled, etc. Contract to be random tested. Doctor and nurses said we don't prescribe that type of medication, would even taper. How can he lie? Sign the control. You know what? This it's kind of hard to understand be... what you're asking. Okay, so listen, was on the fentanyl patch for years, and I signed a controlled, etc. contract to be random tested. Okay, yeah. Doctors and nurses said we don't prescribe that type of medication. Would even take so is this another doctor? Or are you talking about two different visits? So because there are. Patches, so I'll give you, so you had a doctor. Yeah. Yeah. And now you're on a new, so I don't, I just don't understand. I'll let you. There's, we, we, we would need, uh, we would need a little bit more info on this. I went to a doctor's office and I walked in one day and I was, uh, I was fresh out of prison and, and the, the, uh, not this round first prison sentence and the state was paying for, um, the visit and all that. And when I went in, the guy said to me, this is what you need. And he, and he gave me a list of like four medications and he said, but I can't write your prescription for any of them. Because here we cannot write a prescription for anything that is considered uh, abusable. They wouldn't even write a prescription for um, Neurontin. So sometimes it's where where you are, because there are doctors, I promise you, that will write you prescriptions for uh, for pain meds, right? On Suboxone, um, but no car. Driver's license, but no car. You know, if you're trying to, uh, the nice thing about Suboxone, if you're in the United States of America, right? You get Suboxone through a computer, right? He just straight up lied. Yeah, I mean, that's that's horrible. It is. That's horrible. And, and I would report him. I really would. One must taper to get off those patches. Is, I mean, there's no two ways about it. You had better taper if you're uh, taking um, fat patches. Yeah, I would get a new doctor. If my doctor's lying to me, I'm not, I'm not really into that. I'm not, I'm not a big fan of being lied to. Especially no. by someone that's a medical professional that's supposed to be helping me with things that are oh, very yeah. important, you know? That's so, it. Yeah, that guy is supposed to hold himself, to, or, or or girl, that yeah. person is supposed to hold themselves to a higher standard being a doctor. Period. Um, I guess we're all human at the end of the day, though. If there's one thing I've learned, my heroes always turn into uh, humans. <laughs> Imagine yeah. that. Yeah. They that's always were. Is. Yeah, right? Yeah. Yep. Uh, every once in a while, you might get lucky, but for the most part, that is kind of how it works out. Um, yeah, my consumption of coffee is definitely dehydrating me, and I have become conscious of it, accepted it, and now the next step is to uh, uh, take action. Right? What are we going to do to to, honestly, to replace like, though? Right? I know that I know that I'm going to catch hell right now. Right? But I'm going to do it anyway. Let's go. I ended up with Spanky's hydration packets. I didn't know who the hell's they were. They ended up somehow in the uh, in the vehicle, and I got, and and I have bought them to give them back to him no less than four times. 
Yeah, I wasn't. I was just pulling his leg because no, I didn't. But it, I, really I know did he's had them and just hasn't dropped them off. You know what I mean? Like four times I bought so, them and then consumed yeah. them and went back. And My dad's the best freaking dad of all time. Y'all need to get off his back. He's the man. Um, and if I'm pulling his leg, that's because I get to do that. That's my job as the son. Well, I really did do that, though. I mean, uh, no, I in you. my defense, in my defense, I have nothing else to say in the second half of that sentence. <clears throat> no, in my defense, really, I had, uh, uh, when I saw them, I thought, wow, this is a pretty cool concept. Oops. I was the wrong button was- there. I was hoping you were going to see her. Um, oh, no. Can we undo that? Yeah, I'm not going to get hurry up and do it right now. I'll do it when we okay. finish. That's that was right. an accident. Just wanted, yeah, I just wanted uh, them to know that that would be fixed. Well, while, while we're on this, well, since I accidentally did that, um, she really likes to call you out for whatever she feels like calling you out for. Uh. <laughs> yeah. She has no qualms pointing the she finger right like at me. you. Yeah, Shannon doesn't like me, and I don't. I don't know what you got rid of, but you should have left it up. It's all good. You know? well, I I didn't intend to do any of the above. It just uh, okay. the way my computer set up. Sometimes if I move my arm, it'll click, and it's not good. Yeah, I seventh son to that one for sure. <laughs> I think we've all shout out it. to seven. I did it. I did it to. Uh, I did it to Johnny Scoville, and it took me two weeks to fix it. I just, nice. I, I uh, well, it was the first person that I ever tried to fix. I didn't, you know what I mean? I had never had the need to, to try to fix somebody. Um, so, I don't know. Uh, do you know what? My cured coffee maker uh, uh, broke. Yes, that warbling sound no is way. birds. Yeah. Did it really? What? Yeah, the Keurig. Well, but I mean, it's it's had nine million cups of coffee put through it, and I was just trying to clean it and descale it, but I don't think uh, I don't think it's going to make it. Uh, what is your opinion on prescribing naltrexin to someone who isn't an alcoholic and is completely sober? He doesn't have a weight issue either. Has he? And he's he he's never. I don't have any idea why someone would prescribe. Not trusting to somebody. Again, I'm not a doctor, but you've you've eliminated all of the reasons that people normally take that that drug. That's I'm not. Uh, you know what, Tracy? I'm not a, a, a doctor. I really am not. I, I have a lot of opinions on things that can get you high, right? So I know that Ozempic, Ozempic is something, yeah, it doesn't make any sense to me, Brianna. I would really ask the doctor what the hell that's all about because that doesn't make a lot of sense. So the Ozempic thing, because Ozempic doesn't get you high, I'm a drug addict. I'm not a doctor. So, I mean, I know that I know what Ozempic is. It's a drug that, that people use um, to, uh, to treat diabetes. And now they're using it off label as a way to, um, to lose weight. And you know what? I don't think uh, I don't think it's my my place to judge how anybody loses weight or doesn't lose weight. It's really above my pay grade, you know. Uh, I just hope that anyone that's doing anything to lose weight is doing it safe, right? And I hope you're doing it for the right reasons, for real. Because WP thanks us. It's our pleasure. Yeah. The, I didn't um, mean to cut it, you off there. I no, thought, no, no, no. But you know it. what I'm saying? That yeah. We get a lot of people that that um, that do health things for some really twisted reasons, you know. Geoplanet Jane says Ozempic is great for weight loss. Awesome, awesome. I uh, I don't know. I have no uh, perspective on it, but I know that a lot of people seem to really be having a lot of um, success. I have a relative for whom it seems to have been a miracle. Yeah, it does seem like everybody knows someone that it's a miracle for, but I haven't done a whole ton of research, but it also seems to me that it's a a drug for diabetes. So you're achieving weight loss through the regulation or, or manipulation more like of your insulin, which is a terrifying concept. If you know what insulin is used for in the body. Um, So just, just things to think about. I wouldn't flippantly use Ozempic for weight loss. I would I would try and make that a very calculated decision. Lisa Trimble, what do you use to clean to clean your coffee maker? 
I believe it's uh, it's a uh, kind of vinegar is what they told me to use. I can't remember which kind of vinegar, but it's a kind of vinegar. Apple cider, distilled. Um, something, something. Yeah, something along those lines. The uh, so I knew years ago, before anybody was um, before anybody was using uh, or talking about using um, a Zempic for uh, weight loss or things like, like that. Lacey Silver, I knew, I'm so glad that you spoke up. Go ahead, sorry. I know people um, for years who were using um, insulin to beat performance enhancing drug tests. Wow. Instead of, instead of doing steroids, right? By manipulating the level of, um, by manipulating the level of, uh, of your uh, insulin, your body would take and turn stuff into, um, instead of turning stuff, you know, you end up turning it into muscle. And a lot of, of um, you know, competition bodybuilders, a lot of like uh, Mr. America and things like that, uh, steroids, more people are manipulating them, uh, their insulin now as a way to get big than are doing any kind of steroids or growth hormone. And that's been going on a long time. So I'm not particularly surprised that people are going the other route and having and changing your metabolism so that whatever you're eating isn't turning into anything. It's just kind of going out. You, it, it does not surprise me. Um, you know, what, why does it sound way different to my brain when you say get bigger with insulin? Like for some reason, my brain says, that's okay. Let's do that. <laughs> Good. Well, because I, I rest my you're, case. Yeah. Cause you're a dude, you know, it's, it's, it makes perfect sense to me actually, Kellen. And your honesty is uh, not only refreshing, but I think, um, uh, I'm not going to go and get a Zambic. I just, I, or I was just saying, uh, so how did recognizing. I beat, uh, how did I beat heroin? Um, uh, God and a guy named Q Calhounas. Um, Yo. But, uh, that brings us about to the, uh, I know that I'm going to leave you and I'm going to leave you with showing you the cat because I well, have, let's end with the cat. Cause I'm probably going to get out of here too. I want to shout out Lacey silver though. She makes a very valid point. Um, if we're using a Zimpic for weight loss, it's going to make it more expensive for those that need it for diabetes. It'll also and make it so that those that's who need diabetes might not get it. Which and then, yeah, it also fun. makes it so that they might not be able to have it at all. So there are some shortages currently, which is kind of a bummer. You know, if but, you want to uh, use much Zimpic love, much for... love to all of you. Pretty eyes on that kitty, right? There's more kitty videos coming up today as well. Calhoun, yes, sir. Thank you for uh, for having me on board. My pleasure. Thanks for coming. Um, let's do it again sometime. I, I love the morning coffee with you. I'll do it anytime you invite me. Absolutely. All right. All right, y'all, hit the like, subscribe, bell for notifications, and hit all if you'd like to stay subscribed. I really Cleaning appreciate you coming. Cleaning vinegar has more acid to clean with. Thank you, Casey. All right, Calvin. All right. Later, Dad. Later. Bye-bye. You guys have a – make it a great week. Great week. Start with great Mondays. Um, and I'll see you this evening or maybe sooner. Who knows? And also, um, real quick, I want to shout out to – I can't remember who it was – TKD for life sent me an email. Um, I haven't been in the emails or the comments yet, but that's what I do after, after the show in the morning. So I should be getting back to all of y'all. Um, and I'm hoping to set up some time slots today and, and try and, you know, see if we can get that, uh, that plan rolling. Uh, I think that'd be really cool. All right. So have a great day, everyone. We'll see you later.